Synthetic division is another way to divide polynomials. However, it only works in specific cases. So if you have a polynomial divided by a binomial, so see how this says x minus 5? If you're dividing by something like x minus 5, you can use synthetic division. Our last example yesterday, if I go back up here, Notice in our last example yesterday, we were dividing by x squared plus 2x minus 3. You would not be able to use synthetic division for that problem. You would have to use long division. But if you are dividing by a binomial, a plain x, you can use synthetic division. Synthetic division uses the coefficients of the polynomial. So our coefficients are 3, negative 17, 15, and negative 25. It's very important to check to see if you have any missing terms. So if we start with x to the third, we need to make sure we have x squared and x and then a number. We do, we're good on this one. So we write three, leave yourself a little space, negative 17, leave yourself a space, 15, negative 25. Being neat and organized is going to be to your advantage on these problems. A synthetic division bar goes below. Make sure you have room here to write like one line of text. You need to have enough space for one line of text underneath. We are dividing by x minus 5. You put the opposite of that outside the synthetic division bar. So since it says x minus 5, we use a positive 5. Okay, that's the setup for synthetic division. Now let's actually do the division. Your first step is to drop this first number down to the bottom. You have to have numbers at the bottom to multiply with. And since we don't have anything underneath there, your first step is to drop that first coefficient down. Now we are going to do multiplication. 5 on the outside times whatever's on the bottom. What is 5 times 3? 15. That number goes here. So we got that number by doing 5 times 3. Then we add... Negative 17 plus 15, what is that? Negative 2. We are now done with like the first two rounds of long division. Remember last, yesterday how long it took to get through like one round? We're already done with two of them. All right, now let's do 5 times negative 2. What is 5 times negative 2? Negative 10, that goes here. So here we did 5 times negative 2. We add those together. That gives us 5. And then we repeat. 5 times 5 is 25. And add negative 25 plus 25 is 0. Whatever number is in the last space, that is your remainder. The other numbers make up your answer. This is the other kind of difficult thing about synthetic division is interpreting what you get at the end. Okay, we started with x to the third and divided an x out of it. So what would be left? x squared. So this is going to be our x squared term. <coughs> this will be our x term and this will be the number term. So our answer is 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. If we had a remainder other than 0, we would have to put the remainder over x minus 5 and add that in at the end. But our remainder this time is 0, so we don't need that. But remember that the remainder goes over that x minus 5 at the end of your answer. Let's move on to the next example. 
Use synthetic division to divide x to the fourth minus 10x squared minus 2x plus 4 divided by x plus 3. The first thing that you need to check, the most common mistake that is made with, long, with synthetic division and with long division is to forget about missing terms. If we start with x to the fourth, we need to make sure we have x to the third, x squared, x, and a number. Are we missing anything? In between these two terms, there should be an x to the third. So there's a zero x to the third in there that we need to remember. So when we plug this in for synthetic division, we have one x to the fourth, zero x to the third, negative 10 x squared, negative two x and four. What number do I need to put outside of the synthetic division? Negative three. Whatever this is, you take the opposite of that and put that outside of the synthetic division. First step is to drop your first number down. Then you can start the process of multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add until you get to the end. Three times one, sorry, negative three times one is negative three. Add. And you don't need to draw in the arrows if you don't want to, but if you like the arrows to kind of direct your eyes, you can put the arrows in. Negative three times negative three is nine. Add. Negative three times negative one is positive three. Add. Negative three times one is negative three. Add. Okay, this time we have a remainder. And these first four terms make up our answer. What type of x should we begin with for our answer? Originally we had x to the fourth, so our first part of our answer is going to be x cubed. So this will be x cubed, x squared, x, and then just a number. So our answer is 1x to the third, or just x to the third, minus 3x squared, minus 1x plus 1. Our remainder is positive 1, so we put plus 1 over x plus 3. You always put your remainder over what you originally divided by. That would be our final answer. On your next example, first check, are there any missing terms? I don't see any missing terms, so you're good to go. Set this up for synthetic division. Give this a try completely on your own. If you're watching the video, pause the video, try this on your own. This is what your synthetic division framework should look like. Now let's actually do the synthetic division. Drop the 4, multiply, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Add, negative 2 times 0 is 0, add, negative 2 times negative 9 is positive 18, add, that means that our remainder is 0, and our answer comes from 4, 0, and negative 9. Because we started with x to the third, this first term is going to be x squared. So my answer is 4x squared plus 0x minus 9, and we don't need to worry about the remainder. If the remainder was anything other than 0, you would put the remainder over x plus 2, but we don't need to include that because we don't have a remainder. Do we really need to put the 0x term in there? No. 
So our final answer is 4x squared minus 9. Your assignment for today starts on page 258, 36, 37, 38, and 40. Now, if your thing starts, let's say you have something like this. If you start with x squared, the first term in the synthetic division is going to be that 4 from the x squared. So you might not have synthetic division that's quite as long as the examples that we did. That is okay. Don't let that screw you up. As you're working on your assignment, if you get to a problem, you're like, wait a minute, did I set this up correctly before I start? Just ask me. I will let you know so that you have that reassurance before you start.